Había una vez una princesita y ella era la princesita de las flores. Ella era feliz en su jardín porque, porque su mamá era la reina. Y su padre era un gran rey, el rey de todas partes. Y él sabía todo, todo. Era amable, a veces era feliz, pero otras veces era bien feroz. Solo Dios era más poderoso. Do I have a little visitor? No seas tímida, hija. Saluda a tu padre. Those are lovely flowers. Who are they for? For you, your grace. <laughs> Very kind. Do you know what they are? Mr. Sarah says they're snowdrops. Show me. No, my child. Snowdrops hang down. Their petals hang down like drops. Do you know what they are? Wax flowers. See? Five petals. That means they're the wax flower. <laughs>
La princesita era muy feliz porque su padre la amaba. Él estaba muy orgulloso de ella. Prettier than you. Prettier than you. Prettier than me. Stronger than me. <laughs> Él la llamaba mi pedacito de Inglaterra y mi pedacito de España. Pero el rey estaba bravo, porque no tenía un hijo. Él dijo que una niña no era suficiente, que necesitaba un niño. Él dijo que era la culpa de la reina, pero no lo era. Entonces el rey encontró otra reina. Pero ella no era una reina de verdad. Era una reina mala. El rey quería casarse con la reina mala, pero el papá en Roma dijo que no. Y entonces el rey se puso bien bravo. Seem to be a few problems here, Thomas. A few things I can't quite grasp. Here we have the Pope. He's saying how I can do this, and I can't do that. Who is the Pope? He is the head of the church. Is he the king of England? La gente decía que el rey no estaba casado con la reina buena. Pero no era cierto. No era cierto. Are you the Pope to judge in the matter? For one doctor who can say our marriage is void. I can give you a thousand that can say it is valid. Our marriage was made in heaven, and you will never destroy it. I will have my wife! I will have my wife. I will have my wife. La Reina Buena ya no era feliz. ¿Y la princesita? Tampoco fue feliz nunca más. It was very confusing for us because we sort of felt it was like putting himself above God. How could he do that? And of course, you know, thrown into all that meant you could, it meant that you could go into all the churches and monasteries and steal all the plate. Well, not steal. Well, it was steal, really. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's that's a terrible thing to do, isn't it? You you can't pull change the church. That's how it's always been. A lot of people disagreed with, with what he was doing and they paid a heavy price, people like Bishop of Rochester, uh, Fisher, his name, and Thomas More, of course, you know, he was famous. But there were a lot of other people who weren't quite so famous who uh, paid the same price for disagreeing and, or, or speaking out against what Henry was doing at that time. And it was not a, it was not a happy time. So much blood. Poor little Mary. Not so little now. Her father's divorce meant she was stripped of her title. 
no longer a princess, just Lady Mary, the king's daughter. That meant she was a bastard, basically. She was a princess. I'm not going to be a bastard. How dare you call me a bastard? I'm a princess. I'll never accept that. And she also didn't accept the, the new religion, either. She was vehemently against it. One church for her, one pure, holy, Catholic church, forever and for always. A new church? Heresy. And Anne, she gave him a son all right. A dead one. course there were rumours about what she'd been getting up to you know affairs well I'm not saying whether it's true or not I'm just repeating what I've heard but well it gave the king the perfect excuse didn't it to get rid of her She deserved everything she got. After all, we all know what the golden rule is in this place. Don't upset the king. merciful in his way. They were going to use a sword instead of an axe. It's quicker. There's kindness. They even sent for an executioner from France. said about her. She went to her death bravely.
of God, pray for me. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. You'd have thought with Anne Boleyn out the way that it would have been easier for Mary, but it wasn't. Of course, she didn't make it easy for herself. She still thought that she was the king's rightful heir. And that meant that all those people who didn't believe in the new church saw her as a, a figurehead for their rebellion. My own daughter, Cromwell. She defies me. Tell me she still hears mass. While she goes on with this delusion, we'll have every rebel and traitor putting her up as the queen. Better sort it out. Otherwise, there will be consequences. Consequences, Cromwell. Consequences? Mm. Good blade. Painful consequences. And I don't exclude you from that. Not at all. I'm sure you get my drift. Do you get my drift? My dearest father and sovereign lord, I most humbly prostrate myself before your noble feet, your most obedient subject and humble child, who have committed her soul only to God and her body to be ordered in this world as it shall stand in your pleasure, I do, and will submit me in all things to your goodness and pleasure. <laughs> I will submit me in all things, except the thing he wanted most. She wouldn't say she was a bastard. She was a princess, the king's truly begotten daughter. Folly and fantasy. Show your contempt for God, for your father and his laws. I am here to express the King's severe displeasure at your continued obstinacy towards him. Your disobedience of his laws. Such gross disobedience. That the King begins to think you are no longer his daughter, but some monster of nature. However, the King is prepared to show you mercy and to give you one last chance. For myself, 
I cannot understand why the king is so lenient towards you, so tolerant. If you were my daughter, do you know what I'd do to you? Do you? I would knock your head against that wall until it became as soft as a baked apple. You can't talk to her like that. Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know what we can do to you? Anyway. The king in his infinite tolerance is prepared to show you mercy on condition that you recognize him as your sovereign. Yes, of course. You will recognize him as your sovereign and you will submit to his laws. In particular, you will acknowledge the king as the supreme head of the church. I can't do that. You will utterly refuse that the Bishop of Rome has any authority in this kingdom. No. And you will acknowledge that your mother's marriage to the king was by God's law and man's law incestuous no. and unlawful. No, I can't you do You will that. sign the articles to no. that effect. No. You will sign the articles to that effect. No, I can't do that. You will sign. For if you do not, the consequences will be far worse than you could possibly imagine. It would be better. It's a sin. I signed my soul away. I should have let them kill me. It would be better. No. No. Once Edward was born, everyone was very relieved, you know, everyone was very relieved. I think maybe people were sort of relieved, oh, at last, the male heir. That's what he wanted, he'd be happy now for a while, won't he? 
even Mary, really, got, life got easier for her. Um, and she was actually acknowledged to be second in line to the throne by Henry. The old boy wasn't getting any younger, of course. God knows what sort of pox he had. Oh, well, the wages of sin are paid out equally to the high and the low. And even the greatest kings are slaves to their doctors eventually. Being so young, the boy king was under the protection of the council. 